We've talked a lot about NES controllers the past couple of episodes, and it's easy to see why. It had many accessories to its credit, like the variants of the light gun, and even a powerful motion sensing glove that's anything but powerful. But after all of those, we're still on the subject of the Nintendo. So what is it we're talking about this time? Well, if you haven't seen the title of this video, you'll definitely see this. This is the U-Force, an NES controller from Broderbund. An odd name to hear when it comes to consoles, Broderbund usually deal with home computer software. But regardless, they released this controller around the 80s to let players have nothing come between them and the game. As it says on the box. As we take the device out of the box, it seems to be in a clam-like state, being closed and all. But when we open it up, we see what lies inside, and it kinda looks like you're about to play holographic battleship. The U-Force from top to bottom is covered with sensors, and they're indicated by the half circles on the sides. And there are also two on the top and bottom of the unit. If you were expecting something cool in the middle areas, you aren't gonna find it. So we're gonna work our way down to the lower regions of the U-Force to find some buttons and switches. The buttons are your simple start and select, and the red switches are the game switches to be used to switch the sensor placement for each game or for your own interest. The manual goes over a select few in detail, so you'll be aware of what combination of sensors can best suit you when you play with the force of your hands alone. The black switches are for turning on and off the turbo capabilities of the sensors set for the A and B buttons. And this hole is used for certain accessories and games which we'll get into in a moment. But I want to show you the different positions the U-Force can go into when playing certain games. First there's the flat position for use of games like Super Mario Bros. and Kung Fu. It works somewhat as you can see, but not to the best. The standard position is usually the most cooperative position for the U-Force. Most games mentioned in the manual support this position, but some might require some more to make them work properly. For a game like Punch-Out, you're gonna need the power bar. This hunk of plastic with mirrors on the end to reflect the sensors out. And to be honest, this plays pretty damn good. With the mode I'm in, the bar is placed where I can dodge, so I just move my hands to dodge away from the unit. And on the game, I was able to reach Bald Bull with hardly any trouble at all. It was a pleasant experience I had with the U-Force, which was something I wasn't expecting at all. Now, if you want to play some driving, racing, or let's say Top Gun the second mission on the U-Force, Broderbun has got you covered with the T-Bar handle and firing grips. This goes in the same way as the power bar, but isn't as effective with the gameplay as much as I'd like it to be. It does provide a cool experience like with Top Gun where I feel like I'm failing at flying a jet, so I guess it's doing well there. But this is only a glimpse of some of the games capable for the U-Force. It virtually works with every game, to an extent of course, but if Punch-Out can work almost flawlessly, I'm pretty sure a game like Battletoads will work just fine. The U-Force is a novelty nowadays. It gets some flack for not working well, but I would say you should get it to experience a pretty interesting controller. Or at least play Punch-Out. You can play that pretty well on this thing. I want to see somebody knock out Mike Tyson with a U-Force. That'll be a day etched in history. Got any fond memories with this controller slash accessory? Tell me about it by leaving a comment. If you like what you see, be sure to leave a like. If you think others would like this, share the video around. And if you want to see more, Hit that subscribe button pronto. This is Brian the Blue, and I'll see you later.